Hello, greetings. Welcome to the Narrowest Quest for All Nations. Let us pray. God, thank you for saving us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you for all the wonders you're doing in our lives, day after day, night after night. Lord, please forgive all our imperfections. By your Spirit, speak to us. Lord, we need to hear from you in a way that we will be able to comprehend everything you want us to understand as far as this topic is concerned. I'm just an empty vessel. Lord, speak through me and help us to imbibe your word and grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please, I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel in case you have not subscribed and also to like, comment and share this video so that this video can reach more people. If you like the video, if you comment, it will help YouTube to recommend this video to other people. God bless you as you do so. So today we are talking about types of righteousness, types of righteousness in the New Testament. Uh, and I want to limit it to only three types, three types of righteousness. And these three types are self-righteousness, imputed righteousness, and inherent righteousness. Three, self-righteousness, imputed righteousness, and inherent righteousness these three these three types of righteousness so let's look at the word of god um first of all let me explain what uh self-righteousness is uh i think everybody uh, can easily say one or two things about this uh this self-righteousness so self-righteousness is to be convinced of one's righteousness, especially in contrast with the actions and beliefs of others. Uh, self-righteousness is being narrow-minded, moralistic. Uh, we have a lot of moralists. They, because they don't steal, they don't kill, they have their own set of rules, their own level of standard and because they there are some things they don't do they believe that they are righteous but remember that there is no righteousness outside christ our righteousness before god is like a filthy rag and if you want to attain righteousness by your own standard or by your own strength or outside christ you can never be declared righteous. So righteousness is for is through Christ and Christ alone. Righteousness before God, I mean. So those who are who claim to be uh, morally right and they call it righteousness, they are wrong. Uh, a lot of hypocrites have this um, this type of righteousness, holier than thou attitude. They want to see themselves as holier than every other person. If you look at some sets of sects of Christianity, uh, Christians, for instance, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't pray with other people. I mean, not all of them, but majority of them, they don't like to pray with other people. That is what their doctrine says, because they believe that they are the only true worshipers. And there are some people who believe that it is only their denomination or their sects, their sect of Christ, Christianity that we make it into heaven. Other people, all other people are not going because they don't belong to them. But remember what Jesus Christ told the apostles when he was told that, oh, we saw some people doing miracles in your name. And Jesus Christ said, leave them alone. Those who are with us, they cannot be against us. They told Jesus Christ, Oh, we saw some people preaching in your name. Jesus didn't stop them. 
So um, those who feel they are too righteous uh, by themselves or they claim their own type of righteousness outside Christ's own, they are classified under this. Uh, classes under this particular class of righteousness, self righteousness. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 46, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we do fade as a leaf, and our, and, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So our righteousness are as filthy rags. Those who claim to be self-righteous, they should notice that no matter how much we try, we, our righteousness, our human standard is as filthy rags. Then look at Job 15, 15. Behold, he put it no trust in his hands. Yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. So look at the heavens. Look at how pure they are in our eyes. They are not even pure in the sight of God. So if the heavens are not even totally pure to him, how much we who are humans, how can we say we, are, uh, we can be self-righteous? No. All those moralistic Christians know that your morality is not going to take you there. Righteousness is first of all imputed and then inherent. Let's read this story uh, in Luke chapter 18, 10 to 14. These are two different people, two opposite people. One of them claimed to be self-righteous, the other claimed not to be self-righteous, but through all his sins at the altar and asked for forgiveness. So we will choose the one we want to belong to. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Please pay attention to this. Thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are. He's not talking about himself. He's talking about others, comparing himself with others. He is sitting on the seat of judgment and judging others using his own standard. Let's continue. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or as or even as this publican there was this man play, praying there the publican the sinner he even pointed at him he said i'm not like this one i fast twice in the week i give tithes of all that i possess and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven but smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And I tell you, this man, that means a publican, went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that asserted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be asserted. So you see this publican coming before God and not seeing anything good about himself he could not even look lift up his eyes to heaven and claim anything good in himself but he said god have mercy upon me a sinner you can't come before a doctor and claim to be all healthy throw yourself upon him and let him wash you and let him cleanse you and get treated but this man the Pharisee came before God and praised himself, but he didn't go there um, 
he didn't live there justified so let us know that for us to be justified we don't need to claim any form of self-righteousness so self-righteousness is wrong um, it is not something that should be found with us we should not practice it uh, it is not of God we must not practice it so let's look at the next one the next one is imputed righteousness imputed righteousness so imputed righteousness to impute is actually to ascribe to so Jesus Christ when we were yet sinners came and died for us and he died in our place and bore our sins he became sin for us that we may become the righteousness of God and now we have been declared righteous by his death now that we have been made righteous we are now seen before God as righteous people and no longer sinners because one just as Adam sinned one Adam the first Adam sinned and all became sinners through the sin of Adam all fall short all come short of the glory of God the same way through the obedience of one man all have been declared righteous so that is imputed righteousness Imputed righteousness is what we get through justification in Christ when we were unjust and condemned in our sins perishing on the path to destruction he paid and declared us just that is justification Jesus Christ died in our place meets all the demands for what is required for peace with God hereby declaring all those who believe righteous yeah we have all been declared righteous so let's look at a few Bible verses 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 for he had made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him wow so we who were sinners so long as you believe in the death of Jesus Christ you are declared righteous let's look at another passage Romans let's look at this Romans chapter 5 this one is a little bit long Romans 5 6 to 12 for where will we are yet with our strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly for scarcely for a righteous man will one die Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from his wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life and not only so and not only so but we also joy in god through our lord jesus christ by whom we have now received the atonement wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin so death passed upon so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned so we see that because one sinned all sinned and because one obeyed and paid the debt for all our sins all are declared righteous in Christ this is what we call imputed righteousness imputed righteousness so the last one is inherent righteousness listen we said those who claim to be righteous on their own and outside Christ are just moralists 
and they are moralistic, um, narrow-minded people. That's not righteousness. They, that is self-righteousness. And those who believe in Jesus Christ, in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, these people are enjoying imputed righteousness because it they did nothing they just believed and they were declared righteous look at a former criminal on the cross he didn't die a criminal he was he is a former criminal he was a criminal but he didn't die a criminal he died his sins he was declared righteous look at that man right there on the cross he was justified he didn't do anything no work just by faith and he made it into paradise jesus christ told him today you will be with me in paradise so the moment we believe the moment we accept jesus christ as our lord and personal savior we become partakers of this righteousness through christ righteousness in christ R righteousness is imputed unto us because somebody has met the demands jesus christ met all the demands for righteousness before God. And those who believe in Jesus Christ are declared righteous. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him all might be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, whosoever believes in him, should not perish but have everlasting life so it is by faith you receive it by faith now we are going to where a lot of christians have misunderstanding and problem that is in inherent righteousness that's where we're going to right now uh, if the theology of salvation boils down it revolves around these two types of righteousness, the imputed righteousness and inherent righteousness. So inherent righteousness, actual righteousness of personality and behavior, that is the, the holiness and grace, which is in the hearts and lives of the saints. Now, now that you have been saved, do you suppose to still steal? Do you suppose to still commit adultery? Remember, when you get saved, when you accept Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ lives in you through the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you. Okay? Now, because the Holy Spirit is now in you and you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, and because you are now born again you have been regenerated you have been regenerated you have been justified you were once a criminal you were once a thief you were once a robber you were once um, an adulterer you used to lust you used to backbite people now jesus christ said because you believe in me you have been declared righteous and not just declared righteous you are now qualified to be admitted into this kingdom. Now you are a part of this kingdom. And because you can do it on your own, he gives you his spirit. He puts his spirit inside of you. Remember what the Bible says that I will put my spirit in them. So the, this covenant is not like the covenant that uh, that it's not like the old covenant which the children of Israel broke. But this covenant is going to be, let me read, um, okay, let me try to put it on the screen. Jeremiah 31, verse 31, following. So let's read Jeremiah 31, 31 and 32. Behold it is come, saith the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them 
by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant did break. Although I was an husbandman to them. Now let's look at verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after this day, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their heart and in their inward parts, and I will write it in their hearts. And will be their God, and they shall be my people. So when you give your life to Jesus Christ, God writes his laws in your heart. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of you. Remember, one of the names of Jesus Christ is Emmanuel, which means God with us. One of the ways God dwells with us is through his Spirit in us. We are the temple of God. The Spirit of God dwells in us. The moment we give our lives to Christ, the moment we become Christ's own, His Spirit lives inside of us. We, have, we, we receive a seal, the seal of identification, the seal of salvation, the seal of ownership unto the day of redemption. We become Christ's own. So the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and because he is living in us. He also works through us. He doesn't just live in us, he works through us. And we start producing the fruit of the Spirit. Praise God. So we no longer continue with the works of the flesh, but we start doing the things that please God because we have been born again we were first of all children of darkness and now we are children of light and we have to start living the life of righteousness we don't just get admitted into this kingdom our sins and our past records don't just get wiped off but we are expected to live by the power of God by the grace of God we are expected to live life the life of righteousness and that is what we call that type of righteousness is what we call inherent righteousness this is what a lot of Christians have come to disbelieve they don't believe in it they believe in imputed righteousness that yes the righteousness of Christ has been imputed unto me but they don't believe in inherent righteousness that you can produce righteousness from inside. Now, if the Holy God, if a Holy God, if a righteous God lives in you through His Spirit, and that Spirit cannot make you to live the life of holiness, then that Spirit is not a Holy Spirit. Let's look at what Peter said. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, 14 to 17. Look at it. He is writing to believers who were once in the world. And look at the charge here. Look at it. The admonition in this place. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former, former lust in your ignorance. That means you used to lust in your ignorance after the things of this world, after fleshly, des fleshly desires. But now you have come to know Christ, you no longer need to fashion yourselves according to these lusts. But as he which had called you is holy. Just as he, has, he who has called you is holy, just as Jesus Christ is holy. The one who has called you into his kingdom, who has translated you into the kingdom of light from the kingdom of darkness, just as he is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is really, be ye holy, for I am holy. Will you still doubt this? Some people say, oh, you don't need to do anything. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Uh, you have nothing to do anymore. 
you always said so if i am saved why do i need to stop stealing why should uh committing adultery send me to hell why should i not continue to do my smoking no you can't continue to smoke drugs you can continue in abortion in fornication in adultery because that was your former lifestyle now that you're born again you need no longer live that lifestyle but just as he called you is holy you have to be holy in everything you do look at verse 17 and if ye call on the father who without respect of person judge it according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear this is scripture i am just reading and just saying this is what he's saying i'm not trying to add to the word of god so peter here is saying apostle peter is warning here that listen you no longer need to live like your past lifestyle you no longer live to live like that but now be holy just as he who has called you is holy there needs to be this inherent righteousness but there is a warning he gave he said listen and if ye call on the father who without respect of person judged according to every man's word that means if you don't listen to this if you think god has preference for you now be warned there is no preference for he judges god judges everyone without the respect of persons i remember some years ago god told me i will not use because of my love for you to change my standard it is you who need to change your standard and uphold the standard of god some of us think that oh god loves me he gives me money he reveals things to me and because he is so loving and caring provides for me fights for my battles for me he will never allow me to go to hell even if i live in sin listen it's not that he will not allow you to go to hell you are already on your way to the fire of hell that is the truth except you repent because you can do the work of you can't do the works of darkness and expect yourself to spend eternity in light no if whatsoever thing you sow you were going to reap he that soweth to righteousness if you sow unto righteousness you will reap eternal life if you sow for darkness unto darkness if you do the works of darkness you are going to reap death that's a pure that's a pure truth so he said because we have a father who will not compromise his standard pass your time of your sojourning here in fear in fear that is holy reverence fear the fear of the lord is a beginning of wisdom now you need to fear the lord this fear is not a fear of satan it's not a fear of uh, wanting to being killed no that's not a fear this fear is the fear the fear of the lord is to depart from iniquity this is the type of fear so this fear makes you to stay away from sin now let's read another passage about inherent righteousness now that you have given your life to christ won't you produce the works of righteousness that is it be you therefore followers of christ this uh, this is Ephesians 5 1 to 8 be ye therefore followers of god as dear children and walk in love as christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling sabbath. But fornicators and all uncleanness, all covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Now that you have been declared justified 
you need not do the works of the flesh anymore, but the works of righteousness. He said, you are now saints. So now that you have become saints, there should be nothing like fornication, any form of uncleanness, no form of covetousness. It must not be named among you, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things come at the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were once sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Now you are light. Walk as children of light. Don't no longer walk as the children of darkness. So, as children of light, you're supposed to do the works of righteousness. And Jesus Christ said, accept your righteousness, seize the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So, there is an expectation from God. We need to produce some level of righteousness from within us. Next week, we are going to talk about differences between imparted and inherent righteousness. And we are going to look at some scriptures. Um, I'm going to take my time to teach the differences between imputed and inherent righteousness. Um, if you are enjoying this teaching, let us know. Write in the comment section. If you have any question, let me put my contact details on the screen. Feel very free to write me. Uh, if you have any question, this is these are my contact details on the screen. Write me. And if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, feel very free to also write me. For those of you who want to support this ministry, feel very free to support us. If you want to support our charity organization, Ozana David Foundation, if you want to support, you want to pay school fees of a child, either one, so you want to partner with us, uh, we make it very, very open. If you want to be communicating with the child, we do all that for you. Please write me and we will grant you that access, that opportunity to affect the life of a child positively. Or you want to take care of some old people, you want to support them. Whichever way, please let us know. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your goodness, for your word today. We give you praise and glory and honor, dominion and power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, speak your word more and more. Let it continue to resound in our hearts. Speak it every time. Remind us, expand the need in our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. And our Lord, we pray that in any way we are lagging behind in this Christian race, help us to overcome, help us to upgrade our, our, our lives. Help us to make the best use of this great opportunity that we have here on earth. Lord, I remember as many who are in trouble, those who are sick, those who are afflicted by demons, those who are being oppressed, including the nation of Israel that is under attack. Lord, go and fight for them. Fight for your children, O oh Lord. We also pray today that those who have been supporting our ministries, our charity organization, Lord, support them. Those who don't have, Lord, support them so that they can have to give to support your work in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you lord for your goodness in jesus name we pray amen we encourage you to subscribe to this youtube channel hosanna ee david don't forget to share our videos 
and the good Lord will bless you. Real good in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.